Hi, my name is Kathleen, and we want to welcome you to another episode of A New Normal TV. We all have fears that keep us from reaching our full potential in the Lord, but He told us that He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Today, you'll learn how to live a spirit strong life. Check it out. Our reading is going to come from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1. The second book of Timothy, chapter 1. We're just going to read two verses, verses 6 and 7. I want to talk to you this morning about living a spirit-strong life. Tell your neighbor, I want to be spirit-strong. Tell your other neighbor, get your spirit up. I want to, I want to live a spirit-strong life. Can you say amen? The Bible says, this is a man named Paul, the apostle, who wrote, 85% of the New Testament, he's mentoring a young man named Timothy about being a man of God and being a pastor. And he says this to him, and he says this to us today. Verse 6, are you there? He says, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I lay hands Upon you. For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self control. Can you say amen? Living a spirit strong life. You know, I've had this ongoing issue at my house now for, I don't know, about a year or so. We've had this fire alarm issue that keeps happening. It happened in the old house, now it's happening in the new house. So I don't know what this is. Okay, well, y'all need to pray for us. But all of a sudden, one day, three in the morning, I am shook out of bed with this crazy alarm sound. Not only is it beeping loud, but then it's followed with this fire, 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 fire. <laughs> now, what does that do to you at 3 o'clock in the morning? So I started doing the frantic thing, running all over the house, looking for fire. Went to the kids' rooms, they're freaking out. Right? Went in the living room, went in the basement, went in the furnace. Like, I'm like... Where is the fire? Fire, fire, like it's like angry. This fire alarm is angry. <laughs> so I started trying to figure out what is happening, right? The next day, we actually called the fire department. They came, searched the house. They're like, we can't find anything unusual. Maybe there's some dust that wasn't settled, that maybe got into your system and made your system trip up. I said, okay, then that makes sense. He said, change all the batteries and you should be okay. Well, changed all the batteries in the house. A few months later, fire, fire, fire. The angry fire alarm person came back. I don't know why, but it's always around two or three in the morning. It never happens at 10 in the, in the morning. Why is that? So the kids are losing their minds now. They're afraid that something's going to happen. And so since then, we have had the issue, ongoing issue, with a couple of them. Not all of them. I'm not going to point them all out because I don't want you to know which one it was. Because they're going to hear this. They're going to be like, Dad, you put us on blast. Just don't acknowledge which one of you it was. They keep struggling with going to bed. But can you imagine being woken up like that? And then it happened a few more times. So I decided, someone said, why don't you replace all of them? Just go, to, go down to Home Depot and buy all new fire alarm system and, 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 uh, and then buy all the carbon monoxide. Just, just change all of them and start fresh. So I did that. And it cost a lot of money. It's a lot of money to own a house. You know, the problem is not owning a house. The problem is maintaining a house. Hello, somebody with mortgages and bills and stuff. <laughs> like, I'm praying for a big house. Yeah, you pray to maintain it. Pray the extra prayer. Help me with a big house and be able to maintain it. And all the homeowners said, 
<laughs> Say amen. Right? So I did that, right? I changed all of them, my friends, every single one of them, all new batteries. And guess what? Fire! Fire! It happened again. Now my kids are really freaking out. Like, something's wrong with this house, Dad. <laughs> they can't go to bed. We're praying every night. We're rebuking the spirit of fire alarms. <laughs> and then we go on vacation. This week, my friends, would you believe it? We're in a hotel room. 3.30 in the morning. Fire! Fire! My wife's right here. Am I lying? So now we're like, this has got to be demonic. This fire alarm is following us to Cape Cod. Something is going on. The kids are like, they couldn't believe it. They're like, Dad! What is happening? I'm not just sharing this with you. I'm asking for help. <laughs> if you know anything about fire alarms, please talk to me. If you have the anointing of rebuking fire alarms, I'm bringing you to my house. I need exorcism. Because it's not just in my house now. It followed us to Cape Cod. I wish I was making this up. Because it hasn't been fun. Every night, you know how many times they come to our room now? Because they're afraid something is going to happen. And we keep having to pray with them and remind them, like, no, no, no. As you can see, there's never been a fire. There's never been one fire. Every single time this thing went off, dad searches the whole house. Dad buys all new fire alarm. <laughs> right? So there's, there's, there's nothing happening other than this continuous false alarm ringing in your heads. My friends, this morning I got to ask you the question, what is that false alarm that keeps ringing in your head? What is that false alarm that keeps stopping you in your tracks? Because you had an experience a while back and it has traumatized you and now you are paralyzed by fear. And that alarm is different for all of us. For, for us right now, it's a literally physical alarm. But for some of you, it's the alarm of insecurities. It's the alarm of pride. It's the alarm of people pleasing. It's the alarm of, am I ever going to be good enough? If we were to be honest today, we open up our homes, we would talk about some fire alarms that keeps going off. But the thing is, nothing happens, it just keeps going off. My friends, this is why Paul is trying to help this young man, Timothy, to understand, listen, that fire alarm is a false alarm that is trying to paralyze you from doing the will of God. And, and one of my favorite definitions of fear is, is this old school definition that fear is simply false evidence appearing real. More than ever, I believe it because I'm, I'm living it. We haven't had a fire yet. But the fire alarm keeps going off and following us. And which was a great time for us to teach our kids this lesson that, listen, wait a minute, maybe, perhaps, God is trying to show you that you have nothing to be afraid of. It's just a false alarm that keeps trying to take you and paralyze you so you can live in your fears. We all have it. It may not come as fear, but it comes as an obstacle that keeps trying to hold you back from your purpose. It tries to hold you back from your destiny. It holds you back from the person that God knows he created you to be. And you have to pinpoint what that thing is because if not, it will keep ringing. It will keep stopping you in your tracks. Every time you're about to launch into something new, you hear fire and you have a tendency to retreat back into the things that God told you not to retreat back to because God's will for you is never status quo. It's always progress. It's always forward. It's always more of what he has for you. So it's important, my friends, if you're going to live a spirit strong life, first you've got to recognize what's the thing that's holding you back from living that spirit strong life. For some of you, 
is rejection. You've been rejected. So you think every time you're about to launch into something, fire, rejection. Maybe a relationship didn't work out, but it doesn't mean you can generalize all relationships. Maybe a business launch didn't go the way you wanted to, and so you're about to launch a new one, and you hear fire. You hear fire, but I'm here to tell you, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. This is so critical because you could be in church for the rest of your life and keep hitting against the fire and keep retreating back. There's nothing more sad than to be in the house of God, but to not be free to live out the things that God has for you to live out. My friends, you can go about this thing being religious, or you can go about it being spirit strong and continue to push against the barriers and the obstacles and the things that tries to hold you back from the will of God over your life. Never ever left in the first place Let him know In and out of a kid, shake your boy, there's no earthquake On a mission to get it because I guy's great No hesitation, I'm with it wherever he's called me Send me I'm a plug to the light, so I ignite Cause your boy didn't cut that power Power in the highest, so it's about that life And I'ma live it outwards See, all this time must go Cause of the change I've been in in my soul Cause of the change I've been in in my soul I'ma tell the whole world and let everyone know We got the power We shining bright There's nothing that we can't do the victory, so we spread it like spread it like darkness please everywhere we go to why we own the night 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 But let me say a word to those who say, man, but what about me? I'm shy. Like, I'm not. I'm, listen, there's a difference between being shy and being timid. When I was a youth pastor, there was a young girl who brought more people to the youth ministry than anybody else. But she was reserved. She was quiet. But she was bold. You could be quiet and bold. You could be reserved and still do the things you need to do. And then I talked to her. I said, Hanaline, how do you do it? You keep bringing the most people to us. Like, we have to get a van just for her to go to our high school and pick up kids to come. And if you see this young girl, little, little girl, little timid girl, didn't say much. She's like, I love Jesus. And so I just tell my friends, you want to come with me because Jesus loves you and he's for you. Here's this little girl. Now, we have all these other obnoxious kids. We'll never invite anybody. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is it's not a matter of personality. It's a matter of what spirit you're operating under. Because the loudest person does not mean their spirit strong. They're just loud. Spirit strong is knowing I'm operating under certain principles here. The power of God is on my life. So being timid and being shy, not the same thing here. And the reason why he says the spirit of cowardice is that, man, to do the things of God, it requires faith and courage. We wouldn't be here if we didn't take a step of faith. We would have settled for a little, tiny little front store church. Nothing wrong with that. But man, when you have faith for more, you got to believe for more. You can't settle just because everything around you looks the same and acts the same and looks small. You got to break the box and say, God, what else do you want to do with our lives? This is why I'm telling you, it's a very delicate thing to be in church, but to be around people who don't have faith. That church is filled with people who are filled with fear. They don't activate faith. You look at their lives, 20, 30 years, never taking a step of faith. I got to ask you, when was the last time you, took, you did something that required faith? I was talking to our youth director this week about faith. He says, you know, you want to break faith? Give the kids something that they can't do on their own. Hey, you want to you break some stuff? Tell the kids, like, hey, we want to see 100 youth in the church every single Friday. Why? Because that's, that sounds impossible in their minds. That's when you got to go to God and say, God, you have to activate the spirit of power, love, and sun mind so we can see your will. Or we can do the usual youth, 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 
little tiny you thing. Because, you know, God likes little tiny things. He's a little, little baby. You know, six pounds, eight ounce baby Jesus, you know. <laughs> Nicely contained. Nothing supernatural happens. Are you tracking with me? Friends, there's power available. There's love available. There's sound mind available. And, I'm, and I, and I got to run through this, but the, again, the words in the Greek is so powerful. Here's what God is trying to say to us and to Timothy. Say, listen, Spirit of God, man, is what governs the universe. And you can live in tune with that. You can live in tune with the energy that makes the sun come up. You can live in tune with the energy that created the DNA in you. You can live in tune with that DNA that says you're more than an accident. You can, you can live in tune with the power that created the whole thing. You can flow in that. Or you can flow in fear. So the words power, love, and sound mind in Greek, amazing. Can I show it to you? Look, the word power, for example, right? It's the word that we get dynamis from. You know what that word means? Dynamite. Paul is saying, listen, Timothy, the spirit of God is a spirit of explosion of life. It's not a spirit of containment. It's a spirit of explosion. You don't contain yourself. No, you explode into the face of God. Look, it's the spirit that empowers you to do mighty work, that gives you strength and virtue. Check this out. It's the power for performing miracles. Did you know that some of you you can be used by God to perform miracles. Yeah, you, you. Not some super Christian. You, with the power of God. My friends, this is available to us. This is not just some, some, some weird charismatic thing, speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues, but you need the power. I'm talking about daily power of God. He goes on to say, look, it's a power, of, it's, a, it's a spirit of love, my friends. Look what the word love means in Greek. It's the word agape. It's the word affection and benevolence and brotherly love. It's the word that makes Jesus the sacrificial lamb. He agape us. He gave himself. Look what Jesus said about love. Here's what Jesus said. Look, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. He it says it's the love when it's flowing it proves that there's a God who started this whole thing. It's love that makes you give. It's love that makes you witness. The pastor, Steve, spoke to you about Ephesians last week. I want to remind you of this prayer of Paul in Ephesians. He says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Spirit strong. Is when you activate in the love of God. Can we be honest? We don't have the love to love the way God does. That's why we need to ask him to do it through us. Can we be honest? Jesus said, you know how easy it is to love the people that you love? He says, anyone can do that. If you want to love the unlovable, you need the love of God flowing out of you or through you. Or you're going to live the rest of your life miserable because you're operating out of your own strength. He says, no, let the love of God flow. And the last thing today is the spirit of a sound mind or self-discipline. Look, here's what it means in Greek, moderation and self-control. God's people never say, it is what it is. Oh, I can't help it. No, 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 you have the spirit of self-control. You have the spirit of self-control. You don't have to be addicted to pornography. You have the spirit of self-control. No amens there, but we know that's the biggest epidemic in our society right now. There's love and then there's lust, not the same thing. And then you wonder why people are not in love anymore? Because they're confusing lust for love. It's a spirit of discipline. It's a spirit that keeps you calm, not panic and confused. It's a spirit that empowers you to live in a very bitter society, you can still be calm. You can still walk through your life and not let everything get on you. Not every alarm needs to be activated as is a real thing. My friends, the Spirit of God is 
powerful and active in all of our lives. All we have to do is keep asking him to come. So let me end with this. How do you live a spirit strong life? Because I like it to be practical daily things. All of us can do this. Okay, number one, if you're taking notes, if you want to live a spirit strong life on the day-to-day basics, number one is this. Learn to recharge often in the spirit. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have a smartphone? You have a smartphone. How many of you guys don't have a smartphone? What's wrong with you? <laughs> we need to pray for you to get into the 21st century. But here's the thing with smartphones. Man, that battery runs quick. How many times a day do you recharge your phone or your laptop or your iPad? So I want you to think about this. Next time you're about to plug in your phone to get recharged, remember, if you're not running on the Holy Spirit, you're running on fear. Learn to recharge yourself in the Spirit. I used to work in a group home. It was a very difficult job working with troubled teens. And I had to recharge often. You know what I would do? I would go in the bathroom. I'd take a five-minute break just to recharge. I would sit in the toilet and go, Holy Spirit, I'm about to kill these kids. Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, n- n- y'all, y'all ain't real? Y- y'all don't have those prayers? Honest to goodness prayers, God, I'm about to kill Lewis. <laughs> If you don't come upon me right now and fill me with the spirit of self-control, I need you because I don't want to mess up my witness in this place. God, fill me so that I can go out there and love Lewis the way that you will love Lewis. <laughs> Stay home moms. When your kids take a nap, you better recharge because they're coming right back. <laughs> if you don't recharge, you, you, you know. But when you recharge, you see them differently, don't you? You see them with love. And you see, it's, wow, what a privilege, God, I get to have these kids. Some people wish they had kids. When I'm recharged, it, it brings perspective. Recharge often. The Bible says pray always. It doesn't have to be, you have to go in the closet forever. No, it's saying like, as you're living, pray. God, come, Holy Spirit, come. I need your power right now. I'm feeling, t- you're struggling with addiction, temptation's coming. It's time to plug in. Plug into the Holy Holy Spirit. I'm feeling that addiction about to get a hold of me. I need you to recharge me right now. Empower me. You gave me a spirit of power to not give in to temptation, but to overcome temptation. (laughs) Telling you, anytime you're feeling depleted of power, love, and sound mind, it's time to recharge. And you can do it as often as you need to throughout your day. It's not that the Spirit goes somewhere. No, it's that you need to become aware of what you're operating under. The Spirit never goes anywhere. It's more like, man, Holy Spirit, make me aware that you're right here right now with me in this whatever challenge I'm finding myself in. Are you with me? Number two, go ahead. Call out your fears, my friends. Call it for what it is. Don't justify it. Don't make friends with it. I'm, 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 I'm trying my best. Help me pray that my kids will not make friends with the fire alarm. I'm serious. Because months could go by and the thing doesn't go off, but it's still going off in their minds. Months could go by, someone hurt you, but that thing is still playing in your mind. That business that failed, that was two years ago. It's a new season now. You can launch it by faith in Jesus' name. That relationship didn't work. It doesn't mean relationships don't work. It just means that Johnny was a knucklehead. He wasn't for you. God's got something better for you. Call out your fears. Call it out. Don't do what normal people do. Eh, all men are the same. Nah. Stop it. It's a fear. Call it out. Lord, Johnny made me afraid of relationships, but you are the healer of my heart and my soul. Heal me from that brokenness and give me the strength to forgive him and move forward with my life because I'm not going to hold here. I need to go forward with myself. (laughs) Number three, speak God's word over you. 
You have to speak it, my friends. There's power in your words. You know the Bible says that God created the universe by speaking into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be stars, and there were stars. God says, let there be mountains, and there were mountains. And God said, I created you, my image and likeness, to be able to speak things into existence. Learn to speak God. You know what I do often, and I've been doing this, especially for my kids because of what's going on. I walk around the house and go, God, this house does not operate under the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You got a job interview, God, I am your son. I am your daughter. I am favored by you. I am blessed by you. I'm going to go in there with confidence that you are going to make a way for me. I'm telling you, learn to speak the things you want to see. Don't just think it. Speak it. I love to pray out loud. You should see me in my car. You think I'm crazy. If you drive by me, I'm most likely I'm talking to God. And you know why? I like to talk out loud. It keeps me focused. And you should hear what you're saying. It should scare you a little bit to pray some things that are over the top. So like, so like that, God's like, oh, you got my attention. You can't do it on your own? Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming to, 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 to be with you on this thing. Learn to speak life over yourself. <laughs> speak it. Last thing today, number four, get prayed over. Did you notice how that verse started? Paul said, remember, Timothy, I lay hands on you. What is that? It's an ancient practice. That we believe that the anointing of God can be transferred. As someone lay hands on you, what's happening is the Spirit of God now has another witness. So prayer here, it's not just some cute little, you know, get your little prayer. No, it's come get a fresh anointing. Let someone else lay hands on you who has the power of God, who has the wisdom of God, who has the authority of God. Let them come lay hands on you. Get prayed over. Get that spirit off of you. Sometimes you need two or three witnesses to break stuff off of you, to say, Lord, I'm not leaving this place until you release me, until you set me free. I want to be free. I want to live the life that you created me to live. I want power. I want your will. I want your love. And I'm not leaving. You can recharge in God as often as needed and you can ask Jesus into your life right now. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I want to live a spirit strong life. Have your way in me. Amen. It is so important to find a local church to get involved in and grow in your walk with Jesus. And we love to host you. We're located in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and every Sunday we have two uplifting services with kids' classes for all ages. For more information, you can find us on Facebook or our website, newlifesouthcoast.com. Have a blessed week.